Hello and welcome to Castles and Legends. We are in South Wales. This is the third castle we have visited today. We're tired, but I'm super excited about this castle. This is Kid Whirly Castle. Now, come the English Civil War, where afterwards most castles got slighted, destroyed. This castle had no involvement in the Civil War, so it was not slighted. It was already in slightly bad condition, but because it was not slighted, not completely destroyed, it is really well preserved and there's a lot to explore. So let's go have a look. Kidwelly Castle is located in the town of Kidwelly in Carmarthenshire in Wales, overlooking the river Gwyndraeth. In 1102, King Henry I, facing political challenges from the Montgomery family, strategically entrusted the Welsh regions of Kidwelly, Estrad Tawy and Gower to Hywel ap Goronoi, a Welshman who had gained favour with the king. After the Montgomery threat subsided, Howell was murdered in 1106. Henry reinstated Norman control by appointing his trusted advisor, Roger, Bishop of Salisbury, as Lord of Kidwelly. It is likely that the construction of the castle and town began shortly after Roger's appointment. Before becoming a close ally and servant to Henry, Roger served as a priest in Avranches in Normandy. Once Henry ascended the throne, Roger quickly rose to higher positions, including Chancellor, Bishop of Salisbury and Chief Minister to the King. This elevated Roger to a position of great influence, overseeing the Kingdom's administration and finances in the King's absence. Consequently, Roger became one of the most significant political figures in England at that time. The earliest reference to Kidwelly Castle appears in the foundation charter of a small Benedictine priory issued between 1107 and 1114. This suggests that the initial fortifications and construction of the castle likely occurred during this period, establishing it as the administrative centre of the newly created lordship. It was a well-chosen location with good natural defences. The site of the castle was built on the side of a ridge, with a steep run down to the river Gwyndreef below on the east side. The rest of the site was enclosed by an earthen bank and ditch that was constructed in the shape of a crescent. It is believed that this bank and ditch is the only part of the original 12th century Norman stronghold that is still present today. As with other strongholds of the time, it is likely that the original castle consisted of a wooden palisade that was accompanied by wooden towers spaced along at intervals. With an interest in architecture, Roger took pride in his buildings and was quite ambitious in his construction projects. He had his own castle built in Sherborne in Dorset between 1122 and 1137 he was also responsible for two significant projects in Wiltshire at Old Serum, rebuilding the cathedral and royal palace, but sadly only the foundations remain today. With this impressive construction portfolio to his name, it is possible that at least one of the original structures at Kidwelly was made from stone, as a piece of carved Norman stonework was found reused inside the castle. This artefact has sadly since been lost. The original castle would have contained a hall, stables, accommodation and a kitchen, as well as possibly a chapel and gatehouse that would likely have sat where the current stone gatehouse is situated. In 1136, Roger appeared to still be in control of the castle. However, according to the priest and historian Gerald of Wales, from around the same time, Maurice de Londra, whose father had established Ogmore Castle, held a position of authority in the Kidwelly area. In that same year, Maurice defeated and killed Gwenthian, the wife of Griffith ap Rees, the Lord of the Hayberth, in a battle outside Kidwelly. Gwenthian was trying to repel a Norman counter-attack launched during her husband's absence which was a response to a significant Welsh victory near Lachar. 
this victory was part of a larger uprising against Anglo-Norman rule in southern Wales that occurred from 1136 to 1137. Maurice fought against Gwynfian and her two elder sons, Morgan and Melgwyn. Gwynfian and Morgan were killed and Melgwyn was captured. In 1139, Bishop Roger fell out of favour with the new English king, Stephen, resulting in the deprivation of all his lands. The lordship and castle of Kidwally likely passed to Maurice de Londres. The family largely controlled the castle until 1216, although the Welsh briefly captured it along with the town. One such capture may have taken place in 1159, when Rhysac Griffith, the Prince of De Haber, was recorded to be seizing and burning castles constructed by the Normans in southwest Wales. Rhysac Griffith, later known as Lord Rhys, was a son of Gwynfian and went on to become a prolific ruler of the region, dominating the political landscape of that part of Wales. This rule was at the consent of King Henry II, once the two had struck an agreement in the later part of the 12th century. After the death of Henry II, King Richard I took the throne. The diplomatic relationship that had been established by Henry and Lord Rees soon deteriorated with the new king. Due to this, it is reported that Lord Rees went on to build a castle at Kidwelly. After Lord Rees's death in 1197, the castle returned to the Anglo-Normans. By the early part of the 13th century, much of Wales was united against the Anglo-Normans under Thwellan the Great. In 1215, an attack was made on Kidwelly Castle with the objective of capturing and burning it. This attack was led by Rhys Greek, the eldest son of Lord Rhys. It was a successful campaign and it wasn't until 1220 that the castle was relinquished back to Hawise de Londra, the heiress to Kidwelly. Although it is unclear exactly when, it is believed that the first stone defences were constructed in the form of a curtain wall in the late 12th or early 13th century. This would have taken place either during Lord Rees's work on the castle or when the castle was returned by the Welsh to the Delondra family to better protect it from another attack and capture. In 1231, Kidwelly was once again attacked by the Welsh during another of Llewellyn's campaigns and was badly damaged. The Lordship of Kidwelly was once again surrendered back to the Anglo-Normans in 1243 by Meredith, son of Rhys Greek, returning it to the hands of Hawise and her third husband, Patrick de Chaworth. Patrick was killed in 1258 during yet another skirmish against the Welsh at Kidwelly. The town was burned, but this time the castle withstood the assault. Hawise had two sons, Payne and Patrick, who inherited Kidwelly after her death in 1274. Payne had a relatively short but accomplished life, as by the time of his death he was one of the most powerful lords of the Welsh Marsh. He joined Lord Edward, later to become King Edward I on crusade in the 1270s, and later became one of the king's commanders in the war against the Prince of Wales, Llewellyn ap Griffith, in 1277. It is believed that at this time, sometime after 1275, that construction began on a good proportion of the castle that still stands today. This would have likely consisted of the inner ward modernise the castle's defensive aspects. The inner ward consisted of four circular towers linked by a curtain wall, similar to other castles constructed at the same time, such as Conway and Caerphilly. As well as the construction of the new inner ward, the Charworths also rebuilt the majority of the outer curtain wall with four mural towers, a north gate house and a south gate house. With this work completed, Kidwelly Castle was now the concentric layout and had truly been transformed into a significant fortification, equaling that of the royal castles of the north and the mighty Caerphilly in Glamorgan. In 1283, it was used to store Edward I's money 
went en route to Carmarthen and then host the monarch for a few days a year later. The funding for these defences didn't stop with the castle, as in the latter part of the 13th century, the town of Kidwelly also received the money to rebuild its defences, replacing wooden ones with stone. The older the Charworth brother, Patrick, died in 1283, with his only heir being his daughter Matilda, who was just one years old at the time. With Matilda being too young to inherit Kidwelly, King Edward granted the castle to his uncle, William de Valence, Lord of Pembroke. During his ownership, architectural evidence suggests that William may have continued the reconstruction of Kidwelly Castle, as he had done with his Pembroke and Goodrich castles. However, there is no surviving documented evidence to back this up. William died in 1296, and Kidwelly was transferred back to the now older Matilda and the Charworth name. Matilda was granted marriage to Edward I's nephew, Henry, in 1291. Henry was only 10 years old at the time, so it wasn't until 1298 when the marriage ceremony actually took place. Henry was the second son of Edmund, Edward's brother and Earl of Lancaster, and eventually Henry went on to take the position of Earl of Lancaster in 1327. By 1333, Henry's son, also called Henry, was presented with Kidwelly as well as other Welsh estates his father owned. Henry died without a male heir in 1361, and the following year his daughter, Blanche, took ownership. Blanche was married to John of Gaunt, who later became Duke of Lancaster, and they had a son, Henry, who went on to become the first Lancastrian King of England in 1399. Kidwelly was then passed on to the crown. It was during this time that a distinguished hall, solar, chapel and kitchen block were added to the castle. Kidwelly adopted more of a managerial role, with it becoming an administration centre for tenant payment collections and matters relating to justice. It was during this time, however, that the castle received one of its most impressive updates. The original main gatehouse at the south was rebuilt. It is a little unclear as to why this happened, or why it was needed, but the most likely reason being was to construct an impressive feature that symbolised the power and authority of the Duchy of Lancaster. It was truly impressive, and one of the last great gatehouses built in Wales and England during the Middle Ages. Records suggest that the construction of the gatehouse took years, as it hadn't been completed by the time John of Gaunt died in 1399. In 1400, the Owain Glyndwr Welsh Rebellion broke out, but Kidwelly was fortunate enough to have been left alone for the first couple of years. This outbreak most likely led to a new sense of urgency in completing the gatehouse, and by 1402 it was recorded that the gatehouse had been completed with a roof. The rebellion had gathered momentum by 1403, and it was discovered that a campaign was being planned in South Wales. By August, Kidwelly was indeed attacked by the Glendower Rebellion, led by Henry Dodd, an experienced Welsh soldier and former steward. A small defending force was put together before the attack was staged. The town of Kidwelly fell, but the defence of the castle stood strong, overcoming the initial assault which then led into a long siege. Winter then arrived, and the siege was lifted by the Welsh. Kidwelly suffered another attack the following year in 1404, where once again the town was burnt. During these years of unrest, building work carried out on the castle was limited to those of defence and repairs, including a new ditch that was dug outside the north gate. Eventually, the threat from the rebellion subsided, and further work continued on the Great Gatehouse from 1408 to 1421, with more of a focus on accommodation. Records from the 15th century suggest that the castle function was still that of an administrative one. Minor routine work was carried out, and some additional buildings were added to the outer ward. One was a bakehouse, the others could have been halls or stables, 
but it is unclear exactly what they were or when any of them were built. By the early 1600s, and while still being used, the castle was already being described as being in a decayed and ruinous state. It was acquired by the Vaughan family in 1630, and in the 1640s, the English Civil War began, but the castle never saw any action during the conflict, maybe due to its poor condition. Keeping out of the conflict could be considered as quite fortuitous, as many castles in the war were slighted afterwards, which Kidwelly avoided, and is considered to be in a relatively well-preserved state. The castle later passed on to the Earls of Cawdor by descent, who carried out some repair work in the mid-19th century to the Outer Curtain. In 1927, the castle was given to the state and is today cared for by Kadju. It is also open to the public with an entry fee. One last point I'd like to add is if you're familiar with the film Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the castle might be familiar as it was used in the opening scene. We've just finished exploring and this was our third castle today. And you know what they say? Save the best till last. We have really, really enjoyed exploring Kidwelly. There's so many different towers up and down, different sort of rooms. Battlements, there's a lot to see here, it really is. I kind of got myself lost, I didn't know what tower I was in, there's so many of them. So there's a lot here, a lot of history, I highly recommend it, it's a bit like a maze going round, very enjoyable. And I hope you have enjoyed our video today, so if you have, please give us a like, subscribe if you've not already, and we'll be back on another castle adventure very soon, and I hope you'll join us, but for now, Bye!